All right, how's it going, everyone? So um, I'm going to do another leak code problem. I'm actually enjoying doing some of these on my spare time. Um, it's like, it's really entertaining just to kind of practice problem solving in a different way. So this problem, I'm going to kind of, I've already solved it. I'll be honest with you, I already solved it. But I want to try to explain how I came to a solution for it um, if you're trying to learn how to do these type of problem solving things. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's just say generate parentheses is problem number 22. It's a medium problem. It's got a lot of upvotes, so people like this. Now, reading the question, it says, given an n pair of parentheses, write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. All right, so if you look through this code, you're given an n, which is a number, be three, four, five, whatever, all the way up to eight. And you have to output all the different combinations of how you could print out proper parentheses. So a proper parentheses is you have a left opening one and you have a right closing one. Right, so I mean, we all know how to code. We all know what a proper set of parentheses looks like. So these are your options when n is three. Um, and when looking at these type of problems, whenever you see the word combinations, usually you can solve it with recursion. Maybe you need recursion with a, mem a memo cache or something, but usually it's recursion or some type of like, um, I guess technically you can use breadth first search. I believe you can use BFS for solving this. You could use um, depth first search with backtracking with this. But the idea is, sometimes it's not apparent like how you solve this question, um, unless you know beforehand like what techniques can we use to solve combinations, and it's typically recursion. So if you can break this down into some type of smaller steps, it's kind of easier to understand it. So how do you actually solve this with like n of two? Start with something simple, n of two or n of one. When n is equal to one. Obviously, we know that we just need to print out some parentheses because that's the only combination. You have to have an opening and close. When n is equal to 2, though, what is the algorithm? Well, it turns out everything has to start with an opening parentheses, right? So you just go ahead and put an open parentheses, and then you need to decide, do you want to add another open parentheses? Like so. Or do you want to add a closing one? Like so. Right, so you have kind of two different paths you can take. Add an opening one or add a closing one. Now, every time you push on a closing parenthesis, um, you're kind of in a state where you could potentially check if you're done or not. Um, but if you were to push on, let's say, two opening ones, then you can again, you can check, do I add in another opening or do I add a closing one? And if you happen to add another opening, you've actually gone out of bounds because now you have like six characters and really the limit is four. So if you can convince yourself that there's like, you know, two paths for every time you add an open parentheses where you can go to next, this can actually be kind of visualized with a tree. Okay, so you start with an opening parenthesis, and you can either add another opening one, or you can close that opening one you just added. Okay, and if you kind of keep track of what you what you're doing, so as you keep adding an opening parenthesis, keep track of how many you have added, and keep track of how many total characters are in the string. Okay, so this one is one and one. Now, if I were to add another opening, left becomes two and total becomes two. So now we have two opening. And then if you do it again, we have three and three. And if you do it again, you're going to go out of bounds because the problem statement was basically um, n of three, I believe. Yeah, so this, this example is for n of three. So if you have four opening left parentheses, you know you're out of bounds, right? Because you can't have four times two, which is eight total characters. So right there, you know that this is like your, your base case of recursion. You don't need to keep on going down this path because it doesn't matter. If you add another opening, you're done. You can't, you can't solve the problem with another opening. So if you convince yourself of this algorithm using like a tree and like a search pattern with like backtracking, you can potentially just keep on doing this type of pattern and just have some if statements to, you know, make sure you're at a, an end state. And this is like the end state where you have lefts is equal to zero and you have total characters of six. Okay, and let me re-explain like what lefts is. So every time you push an opening parenthesis, I'm just going to increment lefts by one. And every time you add a closing parenthesis, I'm going to decrement lefts by one. So in fact, this should be lefts of one, lefts of zero. And then, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. But the idea is you can easily solve this with recursion. Um, so let's just try to kind of work through this. So let's just make a function called helper. 
and it's going to take in some things. I mean, we want to kind of do the same algorithm that we kind of showed on this diagram here. We keep track of lefts and total. At the very least, let's keep track of lefts and total. Okay. And kind of following that pattern, let's just go ahead and every time we, let's, let's scroll through here. What are some base cases? So let me try this base case. Let's just go to the very end base case. If left is equal to zero and total is equal to n times two, then we're done, right? We found a valid solution. So I'm gonna say if left is equal to zero and total is equal to n times two, then we know that we found a, a proper solution and we can just keep track of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that const combos is equal to an empty array and I'll say combos uh, push. Now, the thing is, is what do we push in? Um, now, when you're using recursion, it makes sense to keep track of the string that you're building up in your parameters here. So I'll actually put another one called combo here. And when we've kind of successfully reached that in case down here, like so, we have a fully built up string that will have all the parentheses. In this case, I think it'll be like open, open, close, open, close, or something like that. Actually, what will this one be? It'll be open, open, close, close, open, close. So open, open, close, close, open, close. This is the in state. This is that combo thing they're kind of keeping track of. That's the final string. So we want to keep track of that in the, the parameters of your recursion function. So let's just go ahead and push combo because we know we're at that end state. And of course, just return so that we don't like keep on doing this recursive function. Now let's kind of look at some more base cases. It's always good to kind of model your recursion with baked base cases in mind, first of all, so you don't like run out of infinite, run out of memory and do an infinite loop. So this one we talked about, like you can't push another left parenthesis if the lefts is greater than the n, okay? So I'm actually gonna just say like, if lefts is greater than n, just return, right? That's kind of how we get out of that state because we can't just keep pushing a bunch of lefts because we're gonna get into this bad state over here. Uh, let's look over here. So here's another state. If lefts is zero and total is three, basically what this is saying is like, actually I have, I have, this, I have this wrong. So every time you push a right one, we decrement lefts and this one would actually become negative one. Okay, so technically if lefts becomes less than zero, we're at a bad state. If that makes sense. I know I kind of did not have this set up properly before I got into talking about it, but if lefts is equal to zero or less than zero, then I'm also just going to return. So again, this is like the backtracking states where like we just get out of that state if it's a bad state. And um, then otherwise, like I think what we could do is just go ahead and call helper of combo plus the left parenthesis. Um, and then we could say lefts is equal to plus one, and then total could also just increment by one. Um, and then let's do that again, but we're gonna close the parentheses. I'm gonna subtract one from lefts, and I'm gonna add one to total. So hopefully this makes sense. So every time we do the recursive call, we're just pushing either a left parenthesis or a right parenthesis like we talked about here. So we either push on a left one or we push on a right one, and then we kind of change the state of the recursive stack based on what we've done. Um, and let's just kind of double check. Is there any other cases that we like might have forgotten about? So if lefts is equal to zero and total is, so this is like the good state, but I guess there's a potential that we could try running this. I think it might crash. We might need to check if total is equal to n times two. Like I think we might need to say if total is equal to n times two, and then we know we've kind of reached the end um, <clears throat> of what we can could potentially do, and I'll say if lefts is equal to zero, then that's when we're in a valid state, and I'll push that. So I think this might be a little bit safer um, and more proper, because remember, total is how many characters are, are in the actual thing, so in this case, it's six. All of these should have six, I believe. So once, we, once we've reached total of six, then like we're done. But then you just need to check if you're valid or not, and then keep track of that. So then finally, let's just return combos here. And uh, since we have like this higher order function that's creating this function, we need to call this one. So I'll say helper of left parenthesis, and then I'll say lefts is one, and I'll say total of one. 
Because remember, we're starting at this, this top node. This is like a root node of a recursion. We start in this state. So we want to make sure that all of our parameters match that state. You know what I mean? So let's try running this. I'm not sure if this will work. It, I'm, it should because I saw this like prior. But yeah, so it looks like it's all passing. Let me just submit and make sure that the whole solution works because sometimes it'll pass for one test case and fail for everything else. All right, so that's working. So this is a pretty cool problem. I really like these types of problems where you have like recursion involved. It's just really a, it's a good brain teaser. But you can actually solve this with breadth first search as well. It's a little bit slower, I believe, in terms of your runtime, but it makes sense as well. You have a queue, you keep pushing on parentheses or closing parentheses, and then you kind of check these same states. If you have like six characters or whatever, in the string in your queue, then you just va validate if you kind of did the same things. But, but yeah, that's how you can solve this one. I hope you guys enjoyed just kind of hearing my overview and my my walk through with this little diagram. Um, yeah, I might continue just doing some of these things because they're actually pretty fun. I know they're not really that practical or they don't seem that practical when they're, you're dealing with real web development, but honestly, like understanding how to solve these problems really helps you become better at understanding how you can write code and how code is like set up with recursion and stuff like that. Anyway, feel free to join my Discord if you want to ask me questions directly or get help if you're stuck on anything. And like always, like, subscribe, comment, etc. Have a good day and happy coding.